My name is Pawan Potukuchi. I'm a director of product um, at Snowflake and uh, super excited to talk to you all today about a whole host of features that you've, you might have just heard about this morning uh, from Christian, mostly around uh, ML and how to do ML on Snowflake. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, stuff to go over. So um, a lot of what we're gonna do today is gonna be focused on a demo, but I'll give you a very high level overview of Snowflake ML, um, some of the new announcements, uh, some customer stories, and then proceed right into the demo. Uh, so Snowflake ML at a very high level is a set of integrated capabilities to run end-to-end -end ML on Snowflake. Um, so it's a three-layered stack. At the bottommost layer, we have a fully managed compute infrastructure to run ML uh, through warehouse runtime and newly introduced uh, container runtime. And in the middle layer, we have a set of tools that enables data scientists and machine learning engineers to build models, to process features, to register models, and productionize machine learning at scale, right all on Snowflake. And at the top layer, we have interfaces through which you can interact with all of these capabilities. Of course, Snowflake notebooks. In addition to that, we also provide a set of commonly used ML functionality through SQL um, functions. And so these make it really easy for business analysts amongst you to do things like forecasting sales, finding anomalies in your data or data engineering flows, or even classify customers into different buckets very easily without being ML experts. So a few um, use cases and customer stories. A lot of customers, including um, some of you hopefully, are building mission critical applications using Snowflake ML already. Uh, so these range from financial planning applications to predict accounts receivable and account payable uh, burn rates, all the way to propensity models to predict whether a particular event is likely to happen. For example, would a customer subscribe to your service or not? So customers like Desile have migrated their ML workflows from Spark ML to Snowflake ML and have realized considerable gain in terms of uh, uh, speed, uh, speed to execute these ML uh, workflows on Snowflake ML. There is Bama, which is a European um, food and vegetable distributor, and they've used Snowflake ML to identify delivery dates and predict currency risk based on that and adjust their hedging strategies. Uh, they have saved quite a bit of uh, um, money as part of their cash flow uh, from this uh, model. And lastly, Ecolab has built a k-means clustering model using Snowflake ML to segment their customers into multiple buckets and target um, promotions to them. So going to the meat of the discussion today, I'm gonna to talk about um, several capabilities and how they kind of light up in uh, a demo. Uh, so this ranges from Snowflake Notebooks, uh, that is an integrated development environment to build ML workflows, to container runtime, which is a prepackaged environment available on um, Snowpark container services that makes it very easy for you to do things like distributed training, and um, feature store, which enables you to compute features and ensure that you can reuse them both as part of your training and your inference workflows without having inconsistencies. And model registry that enables you to package all the underlying artifacts of your machine learning models and uh, register it in one place. Uh, you can do role-based access control um, and uh, use Snowflake Horizon features on top of uh, the model registry as well as ML Lineage, which essentially lets you track the journey of your data all the way from data set to feature computation to models to productionization all in a single pane of glass. Okay, so without further ado, let's go through the demo. Um, so in this demo, uh, we're gonna go to a hypothetical food truck business called Tasty Bites. Um, and what we are gonna focus on this particular demo is generating a set of recommendations for this business 
to target a sales campaign in a particular city that uh, this business operates in. And at the end of the demo, what we want to do is create tailored outreach campaigns that tells um, a particular customer, hey, there are these new menu items that you would want to try out and boost sales based on that. So high-level architecture of what we're going to go over. Um, so we have three different data sets that we'll be gathering data from. Customer information, menu-related information, and purchase history information. Uh, so this is typical of any recommendations uh, workflow that you might want to build. And uh, we're going to use the Snowflake Notebooks environment uh, with container runtime to build um, a distributed um, recommendation, deep learning recommendation model using uh, the PyTorch framework. And we're going to register the model and uh, deploy it in Snowpark Container Services. We're going to run some predictions and visualize these predictions in a streamlit application. So we're going to start our journey with SnowSight. And we're going to create a notebook. And when you create the notebook, you enter a um, few configuration related parameters. And the more important thing here is the ability to run this notebook on a container with prepackaged um, environment built in for you, whether you're choosing a GPU-based uh, uh, notebook or a CPU-based notebook. We're going to use a GPU-based notebook. And uh, that's about it. That's all you need to do in order to create your notebook on a GPU environment. Um, so this will take a couple of minutes. I'm going to use a notebook that I've already uh, built here. And um, so we're going to kick off this notebook and talk through what's happening, um, and then look at sort of the sequence of steps across the board. Um, so we have a setup step that is running, uh, that has run already, and it's importing a set of libraries as a standard for any notebook that you want to build. And um, so here is where we are looking at the GPU information. So we have four different GPU devices that can be used to process data in a distributed manner. And um, we're going to gather features from, um, the, uh, from a feature store. And um, as we discussed, there are three different data sources, right? The customer data, there is the menu related data, and then there is a the purchase history data. So let's quickly examine how the feature store um, experience looks like. And so this is the UI where you can register features and feature views. Um, and I think the more interesting feature view here is the purchase history data. Because what we are trying to do here is we are aggregating sales and purchase history data on a monthly, weekly, and yearly grain. And this is happening on a rolling window basis, right? And doing something like this um, is not very straightforward to do. And especially if you want to do this on a rolling basis, you have new data coming in, you need to keep aggregating this data, which means you need to maintain feature pipelines and computation infrastructure, which takes a lot of effort. Uh, but with Feature Store and the underlying dynamic table infrastructure, all of this is abstracted. And all you have to define is the grain at which you want to aggregate your data and the periodicity with which you want to aggregate it. And it gets done behind the scenes for you. And um, for those of you that may not be familiar with Feature Store, I think it's a very important capability that enables you to unify your training as well as your serving pipelines so that you're not computing features in one way in your trading pipeline and a different way in your uh, inference pipeline. Now, going back to our notebook, um, so we've gotten these feature views. And the next step we are doing here is build a data set. And the data set is a core construct that we've also launched along with Feature Store that enables you to create an Im immutable copy of your data that enables you to track lineage across the board. Um, and as part of building this data set, uh, we are getting data from all these feature views. And as you can see here, there's a customer information, menu-related information, and some purchase history, demographics. And you can see the aggregated features that have been computed as part of this uh, um, data set. And between the training data frame that we have compiled and a validation data frame, we have about 2.4 million rows in this data set. And the next step that we have performed here already, which has been executed, is the feature processing. 
uh, step. And so here we are normalizing the numerical data and uh, encoding the categorical data and essentially preparing it for uh, machine learning purposes. And operations like this can take a very long time depending on the amount of data you're processing them against. But with Snowflake ML, you have these common operations parallelized behind the scenes for you. Um, and just the way you use these operations through Python, uh, that is how you interface with them. But behind the scenes, Snowflake ML is converting these into SQL operations and ensuring that they run in a parallelized manner across your entire cluster without you having to do anything, which is why it runs fairly fast. And if you were doing it in any other way, it probably could take an order of magnitude more time for 2.4 million rows. And um, we have a few other steps here where we are registering this processing flow, um, and we'll use this as part of our inference steps at a later point. And uh, the next step here is defining the underlying model. Um, so we are using an open source PyTorch-based deep learning recommendation model. Um, so this is available on the internet for you to learn more about. The purpose of this demo is not to go into the weeds of uh, the model itself, uh, but at a very high level, it's a multi-layered neural network. Um, and we are passing the data set that we have created and the training data frame that we have created in order to train this particular model. And this is all open source code. You don't have to change it. You don't have to uh, modify it for any uh, reason. It runs, if it's running in your environments elsewhere, it'll run here in the container runtime environment. And um, for the model training uh, step here, we have picked two epochs, uh, which are essentially passes that happen iteratively on the machine learning model to converge. Um, and we've reduced the sample data set to 100,000 rows in order to make it um, process in a timely manner for the demo. And um, so this is where the logic for executing the model is getting defined. Uh, but the interesting part that I want you to focus on is the PyTorch trainer interface. So this is a new API from Snowflake ML that enables you to supply open source PyTorch training code directly to this um, API. And it creates the machine learning model behind the scenes in a distributed manner for you without you having to do any other um, legwork. And if you see um, the processing of the job, um, I think two things that are important. So here are the two epochs in which the training is happening. And as you can see, there are four different um, steps here, uh, which is essentially the distributed uh, nature of this processing that is uh, coming to bear. So once the model is trained, and it took us, I think, a couple of minutes to train it on uh, 100, uh, yeah, a couple of minutes to train it on 100,000 rows. And so once the model got trained, we are using the model registry functionality to register this model. And that is a step uh, that happened already here. And it's a single step. Um, so there's not a lot of work that you have to do to figure a container image that this model needs to run in or anything else. Um, it is a very simple single step. And um, you also give some sample data related information as model metadata, and all of that gets registered along with your model artifacts in model registry. And so we can quickly see uh, where that happened. Uh, so if you go into the model registry UI, uh, you see that there is a model, um, the rec model demo that got registered with one version. And um, there is additional metadata information that hasn't been yet populated other than the input fields that we have just talked about. And so that is going to happen in a subsequent step um, as part of model execution. And after we have registered the model, we are also deploying this model to create a service against which you can run predictions. And so that is the step that is happening here. You can either use the warehouse run runtime to deploy your models, or you can use the container runtime to deploy it. Since we have used GPU packages and a bunch of other additional um, package, packages here, we are going to use the container runtime um, approach. And it's very easy to deploy into the container runtime. Uh, so you just have a very simple YAML file that we are using as an input. And all we are doing is telling this um, deployment step that, hey, load this model from and this version from the model registry, and then uh, deploy it into the container environment. And that's pretty much what it takes. 
And so that step has taken uh, a couple of minutes to get uh, deployed. And this is the step where we are performing um, predictions against the service that got created earlier. So if you, if you see here, we've created um, a service in the container environment called uh, tbrec service demo predict. And in the inference job uh, execution, that is the service that we are using. And um, we are also using the feature store here to again retrieve the re relevant features to pass on to the inferencing job. Remember we talked about having a unified um, experience between your training and serving pipelines, and that is what is facilitated in this particular step. And um, we ran a bunch of predictions, and um, as you can see, there is a binary prediction against every customer that is used to uh, retrieve the corresponding recommendations later on. And uh, the next step we are doing is retrieving a bunch of metrics related to the model quality um, aspects. So we vary under the curve, recall, precision, standard uh, ML metrics that you want to pull together. And the interesting thing we are doing here is registering all of this metadata into the model registry so that we can retrieve it. So if you create a new version later on, you want to compare this metadata against these versions to figure out which model is performing better and which model you want to put in production. And um, we can go and look at the... I need to just refresh this. And so the description from the uh, notebook got updated here. If you go to the version, you can see the metrics that we have registered also appearing in your model registry. And yeah, so that at a very high level is the end-to-end -end flow. We are also going to look at the Streamlit app um, that can run predictions on this model. So let's see. Okay, so Streamlit is a very integrated experience for you to build very simple Python-based uh, uh, UI applications. Um, and uh, what is happening in this particular step is we're just loading the, um, the Streamlit application. And the application, what it's going to do is it is going to run predictions against the same endpoint that we have run in the notebook and show us the corresponding predictions. So you can have some intuition around Okay, so we've recommended these menu items for this customer. Um, what is it based on? And you can also look at the purchase history data for that customer and figure out, okay, like, you know, these recommendations make sense. Um, so it's, uh, it's running. So I have a screenshot, meanwhile, before it runs. So this is how it looks like. Um, so you see that um, the three different customers for whom the recommendations have been generated. So customer number five, we have recommended chicken ramen and a breakfast, breakfast scrape. And if you look at the purchase history information, you kind of intuit that, oh, there are other types of crepes that this customer has purchased in the past, and also other types of ramen they had purchased. So there is some intuitive connection between uh, what has been recommended and what has been purchased. Okay, so just bringing it all home. Um, so we've looked at uh, several different capabilities, how notebooks can be used to run SQL and Python uh, code uh, very intuitively without going through hoops in your Snowflake environment. Uh, we've looked at how container runtime can be used to process distributed data, uh, process data in a distributed manner at scale, we have looked at how uh, feature store can be used to unify your um, training and serving pipelines. And lastly, we have looked at how all of this can be managed in an intuitive way using model registry um, so that you have end-to-end -end visibility into the life cycle of your machine learning model. So I have a few, a uh, couple of next steps here. If you're interested, there's additional information and a quick start guide uh, to get started with a lot of the uh, capabilities that we've just talked about. Thanks a lot.